I took a, a class of yours, like I had mentioned earlier, um, and I, first of all, I, I will never forget how beautiful it was, just not everybody has a practice and not everybody has the uh, sort of guidance to create a practice, and so I love that you introduced that in the class because your first five minutes of the class are to sit in silence before everyone paints, and I really love that, by the way, I just thought that was beautiful, but you really encouraged everyone to sort of just let go and to create, as you said, from the music that you put on and, and from the feelings that arose. And it, even as I watched some of the women in the class, who it was mainly women, I think, right, yeah. um, sort of connect. And as we placed the paintings on the wall, it was so evident to see who was able to find that. And that's so beautiful that you can now sort of share that journey in your own process with the people that you're able to you know, connect with. Right. Yeah, because um, how, how, how do you sort of feel like that evolves, like the classes and the teaching, and are you finding a different space in, with that? Yeah, so teaching, really, uh, I never thought that I would teach. Like, it, it wasn't something that I, ex you know, I expected myself to do. But, you know, things happen as mm -hmm. they should, as I believe. And so... When I was offered the opportunity through Poketo um, and was able to teach the class, it was an experience of, hmm, how do I say it? It's different when you see it through the eyes of somebody else. Mm. Like I can do my own practice and I can, you know, do the painting in my own way, but it's completely different when someone else does the same thing, but in their way. And I was really moved when I saw all the students pick, you know, paintings on the wall. And they're so different, and yet when each person had the opportunity to share their vision of why they created that or anything, it could be something really silly. And even then, it's like I got a chance to get a glimpse into who they are, and I don't even have to know them. And it's like, oh, I get it. you know. And that was just, the first class especially, it was very, um, yeah, I was really taken aback by it, you know, how much um, art can speak. For the for the person and this mm -hmm. is just a workshop you mm -hmm. know it's just you're just ex starting to explore mm -hmm. um but you know with all things i also felt that i wanted to change how i approach teaching and also what i'm teaching and so i just finished a workshop in september it's actually the last one i'll be teaching in a while because um, and it was more about sharing all of the things that i've learned up until this point about being authentic with your mm -hmm. I call it authentic branding, but it's not really branding. It's like how to be authentic with yourself, with other people, through what you do. And after that workshop, the intention was that I also revisit the idea of teaching. What does that look like? You know, is it more about giving talks? Is it more about hands-on experience? It's not that inspiring after a while. I feel like it loses the magic, right. at least for me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to always be fully engaged, at least when I'm teaching mm -hmm. from my point. You know, I feel like it's very 50-50. So I want to be 50% all in when I'm teaching. I don't mm -hmm. want it to be 49%. And I started to feel like it was feeling that way a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. um, and so I felt like it's, it's time for me to kind of reevaluate. <laughs> yeah, go back into my little hermit hole and <laughs> check and it. Rest. Yeah, and rest. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? It's, Mom, it's beautiful. I got to see it when Anna squealed. And Anna, <laughs> and she came so in the mail and, and she got it. Thank and you. Um, it's really beautiful. It's magical. Can you really tell is. us about where that came from and your vision for it? And um, So, again, this was one of those times where I heard a voice and says, you have to write a book. And I've never written a book in my life. I love books, but... It just never crossed my mind to write it because I don't have experience. Mm -hmm. But it was a time when I was visiting family in Singapore, and it was during Chinese New Year. And it's a time when all family come together, and so it was a very um, I don't know how to describe it. I felt like there was a lot of energies coming together. We are, we went to the graveside of uh, my husband's grandfather, mm -hmm. and you know I saw um, his energy there. And so it's like a lot of things are happening on this trip. And the first three days I was there, uh, I had woken up really early because of jet lag every morning <laughs> and before the sun came up. And so I was like, what can I do at this time? Well, okay, I'll just do my usual morning routine. So, you know, meditating and did a little bit of yoga and saw the sunrise. And on the third day, I heard the voice, you know, write a book. I thought, 
okay, it's one of those things that I'm like, okay, you know, and, but by this point, I'm kind of used to it. So I thought, you know, as usual, give me three signs. Like I, I need to see it to believe it. And um, surely enough, the, the signs came when I got back to LA. So about a year and a half before it was released, I started to write poetry. But the funny thing was I was already sharing some of that even before the message mm -hmm. came. So it's like, I was already preparing for it without realizing. Mm. And even the writing of the poetry it came out of nowhere. I just one day started to see these words formulate mm. when I was writing in the journal and I would just share it online. Mm. Um, and so they ended up being, the collection of this is channeled messages and poetry for more of like the everyday. Um, and I felt that it's really important to be in the moment, especially because of how fast we're going lately mm. with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that people can kind of sit and enjoy or contemplate based on what's written and they can kind of read it and evaluate how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of a meditative book, but also, you know, with artwork in there so that it kind of, I think sometimes the visual helps to jog the mind a little bit, so. Mm -hmm. I love that, it's really beautiful. You're also doing healings, yeah? Mm -hmm. And is that something that you just fully just became became fully comfortable with and you were like, I'm ready to share this with the world. No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Um, no, that 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 is I think really feels like it came from left field for me because I mean, again, you know, all these things in hindsight I was already doing since I was very little, but mm -hmm. you don't really know what you're doing when you're small. You just kind of you're just there. You know, mm -hmm. you're just kind of living. And so I was channeling messages in my journal and I had um, I had hid this from my parents for a long time, 20-something years. And, you know, with the journaling, the messages, it was coming to me in Old English. And I knew it wasn't my writing, or it wasn't my own thoughts. Because all the things that was being written in there was kind of coded. So I had to decode to understand what was being said. So, you know, I asked my mom over one day, and I'm like, you know, I have to tell her because I can't hide this forever. And so... She came, I showed her the journals, and I explained to her, like, this is how I am, and this is who I am. Do you understand? And at first, she was completely like, what is she talking about? It's nuts, you know, crazy talk. And for about a week, she couldn't believe it, so she was asking her friends, or telling her friends about the experience, trying to digest it in her own way. And then all her friends were telling her, like, well, that sounds like her. You know, I was like, why didn't anybody ever tell me about Aww. this, you know? And she fell so in the dark, and, and they're like, well, how can we tell you that your daughter's like that? Would you would you have listened? And she's like, probably not. Mm. So that kind of started this movement, and um, she started sharing with her friends. And my, my parents are actually both Buddhist lay monks. Okay. And so they have other friends who are Buddhists and who have grown up with me and who have known me. And um, so I attend this woman's group once a month, and the ladies are like in their 60s, 70s, like, you know, a lot of older ladies, which is great. I love it. Yeah, it's so fun. Um, and during one of our meetings, I, my mom suggested, she's like, why don't you share with them what you're going through? And I'm like, you mean like I'm going to tell them all this stuff? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, are you sure? I'm like, are you sure? I'm really scared. You know, I'm like so nervous. And they're like, she's like, no, no, I, I think it'll be great. So I ended up sharing with them, you know, about the energy reading, how I see auras, and, you know, I see colors when I hear music, and all this, all these things I've been keeping a secret. Mm -hmm. And there was this really sweet lady that was sitting next to me that day. I've never met her before in my life. She's um, in her, like, mid-70s. And she looked at me and she said, can you read my energy? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I've never done it before. So I was like, I don't know. I'm, okay, I'll try. So she's like, yeah, just tell me what you see. So I was telling her all the visions I was having and what I picked up from her. And then she showed me a picture of her boyfriend who was like 80-something. So cute. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so sweet. And she's like, tell me about my boyfriend. I'm like, okay. So I was sharing and she's like, that, that, how do you know? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But something inside of me is telling me that these are the things that I'm supposed to see. And then all the other ladies, you know, being older ladies, like, oh, can you read my energy? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So it was just like, you know, the right. word of mouth. And yeah. it wasn't work at the time. I was just kind of doing it, you know, for people who might be like cancer patients or like mm -hmm. people who have chronic illnesses or people who had lost their loved one. And it was just, you know, I was just kind of doing it to help others if I could. Because for me, it was a curse when I was younger because I couldn't be normal. And so it was a healing process for me to be able to be of service to mm -hmm. others. And then one thing led to another, and people started coming that I didn't know of. And they're like, why don't you 
you know, do it for work, but then I was starting to get depleted energetically. Mm -hmm. And so I asked the universe, like, how can I balance this? And, he, you know, and, and the universe was like, well, you can charge money, but charge it in a way that is an exchange between your energy for what you believe they mm -hmm. will share with you. So I always tell people, like, the exchange of money is not money. People earn money by, by expending their life energy. Mm -hmm. So it's like just a form of um, it's easier form of sharing energy. So when I receive money from anybody, whether it's they're buying art or energy reading, I always feel like I'm getting a piece of their life, mm. and it's, I'm very I want to be very responsible about it. So when I do energy reading, when I when they do pay for it, it's almost like okay, thank you for giving me a part of your life. Here is part of my energy, and it's like mm. an even exchange. Mm. Yeah. So that's kind of how it came about. What a beautiful. What I feel like sometimes people have weird relationships with money and it's such a beautiful way to shift that mm. thought process and thinking of it as an exchange of a part of your life. I love that so much. It's so powerful. Yeah, because you can't, the, the energy and the time you spend to earn that money, it'll never come back. It, the only way that it stays is in the form of money. Mm -hmm. You know, so anytime you spend a penny, it's like, I feel like it has to be worthy of that much of yourself. Mm -hmm. That you're giving it to someone, it, that it better be worth it mm -hmm. because you're not never gonna get that back, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I always feel like for that reason too, um, I don't really focus on the financial aspect. Although maybe I should, I don't know. But I don't as much from a business because um, I feel like there's more, you know, there's a reason why that money is coming in, and there's a reason why um, I need to be expending my energy, and it's equal. I think it's like an equal chain exchange. Mm -hmm. I also love the fact that all the things that that felt when you were young about that weren't great or right or were weird or all the things that are making you such a successful artist and such a, a wonderful human as an adult that it came full circle that you found a way back to it and found a way to bring love and light to it and to also give give that as a gift to others that may not feel normal or you know to feel different I just think that's such a gift in itself and owning that story and putting it out there is, is so inspirational I think. thank you that's been a long journey yeah. and you know what I think was so interesting like you held it from your parents for so long and once you shared it with your mother and it took her that time to process then it was almost her that led you in that path, mm -hmm. you know, she sort of just once, which, you know, I, I, for me, it feels really important to be seen and heard by your parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. And once you were able to sort of liberate that feeling, then it just, then you had her to sort of hold your hand yeah. through, which is just really be beautiful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was lovely. This is great. <laughs> oh, it really has been so beautiful. And the other takeaway, I just, I know it's not the point, but I just want to say is that I love the fact too that everything you shared, every time you opened up and said, give me a sign, you said, this is something I don't have any experience with. I don't know how to do it, but you did it anyway. Mm. And the courage. yeah, the courage of that. And, and I think so many times we get stuck in, I need to know how to do it first, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I need to have the right experience to be valid or to even have the permission to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also another beautiful lesson and takeaway is that sometimes you just have to do it and you don't have to have the experience and, and look what this has created for you just doing it, you know? Right. Sometimes maybe knowing how to cripples what we right. do. Right. Yeah, because you have rules already set in place and yeah. like how you think it should be done. Um, and I noticed that, especially in times when we are feeling fearful or um, not knowing what to do next, if we jump into the unknown, is when like the most powerful stuff mm -hmm. come out of it. Mm -hmm because you're so invested in needing to come out the other end mm -hmm. that you're just like putting your whole self in it and something really magical happens there, I feel mm -hmm. like. So it's almost like the more fearful you might be of the outcome, it's almost like the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that sounds really crazy, but... Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> really right? true. The yeah. risk is the higher. Risk. Yeah. 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 Is there 
This is one of our favorite questions. Hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that didn't work out that you look back on and you're so thankful that it didn't? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely getting sick. Mm. I, I hate it, or not even hate it. I was so, so angry when I got sick because, you know, again, my mentality at that time was like everybody is succeeding. You know, I was, by the time I graduated art school, I was in my late 20s. So, you know, my peers were making a name for themselves and, you know, earning money and all the things that I thought I needed in order to be secure in myself. I couldn't because I was bedridden. Mm. And so, so angry. You know, why did I have to get sick? Like, this is not supposed to be happening to me. And um, and I'm not fully better yet, you know, till this day. And But it's been the biggest blessing for me because I wouldn't have realized all the things I've realized or even be the person that I am if I didn't have that kind of like falling off the cliff experience mm. and um, and I'm so thankful for all the things that not that I, I've only learned through my own experience but like each person who's come into my life since then that has shared their thoughts I still remember my father like I was so so angry and he was like you know you're sick but it's really interesting, isn't it? I'm like, what is interesting? There's nothing interesting about this sucks, you know? And then yeah. he's just like, well, because all the things that you haven't noticed, you're noticing because you're stopping right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, have you thought about that? I was like, oh. And he's like, yeah, like the little things that you took for granted, like being able to go to the bathroom by yourself mm -hmm. or cooking, for example, or keeping the house clean or even talking on the phone because I couldn't. Talking to your friends on the phone, he's like, all those things that you thought nothing of, he's like, they mean something now. Mm -hmm. I like, think about that. It's like that's really powerful. And I thought, you know what? That's true. You know, I never really thought about that. It was just so like a given. Mm -hmm. And then everything started to become more um, beautiful to me. Like every little thing was so beautiful because anytime I was able to get a little bit healthier, it was like a huge step for me. You know, and and no one would understand that excitement. But and then um, recently, I was reading a book by the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu and. It talked about how um, you need the times of mourning and sorrow in order to be able to experience the joys and happiness mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they're hand in hand. And so in hindsight, I'm so thankful that I had the time to stop. And I might not be as for, you know, far down the road as somebody else might be, but I don't know, I'm like totally okay with that. If anything, I'm like happy. Yeah, yeah that, that success is not... Um, not like one way of doing things. I can't. I need you to cover. <laughs> I guess oh is there anything God. we haven't asked you that that you want to share? Yeah. Oh man. Um, anything and everything, also anything to the community if you want to share with them or, you know, or artists or whatever you feel. I, I really believe that, we were just talking about this this morning, me and Amelia, but with all the things that are going on in the world right now, and especially in the U.S., and there's so many sides to the way that people see things um, and people are so quick to judge saying like that's right that's wrong you know you should be thinking this way or that it's really starting to make me look at myself and the things that I might hold judgments against or things that I might be perceiving in a way that I think is right but if we were to be from the perspective of the other person maybe it's completely wrong and that has to do with the way that you're brought up or you know, the, the beliefs that maybe your community or your peers or your parents have placed upon you. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I open up the um, possibility of there being other ways of experiencing the world. Um, I'm all for um, equal rights for like women and I'm all for um, you know people being more conscious about who they are as a being and like, all those things I'm I'm all for that but I think 
at the end of the day, it's not about sides, you know, men or women or um, creative versus like not or you know, there's just so many so many contra con uh, contradictory ways of seeing things. But um, as a human, you know, being equal, you know, seeing each other as equals that we're here to like support one another, that we all have our different gifts, and we all can't be everything. No one can, you know, and that's what makes it great is that each person has their strengths that they're here to share. And at least for myself, my goal is to be able to see that within each person that I meet to really look at them for who they are, just like you're saying, um, and to, to experience that individual spirit as they're intending, even if the words that come out of their mouth are like really foul and you're like, I can't communicate with that person it's like okay can I push beyond that can I connect with that person as who they are it's still a work in progress I'm definitely not there yet but it's a goal that I have for myself especially because so things are so divided that not only through my artwork but with anything to have that intention of trying to um, see that person for who they are because I think that's what it ends, that's like kind of like the end goal you know at the end of the day like people just want to be understood and people just want to be respected and treated well. I have to end this on a, on, on a little story that I had yesterday when I was driving downtown. So I um, was at a stoplight and there's a homeless gentleman next to me. And I've had really bad experiences about um, giving money to homeless people. Like I've seen when I was younger, I've seen a homeless guy take my money and like go buy drugs or like, you know, go buy booze. And so I've, I've always had this kind of not so great experience. But I also know that there's some people who are not like that, but you don't know. So anyways, I'm at the stoplight, and this um, homeless gentleman was completely passed out, leaning against this pole. And I thought that um, he was asleep, so I wasn't thinking anything of it. And my window is cracked open just a tad bit. And I hear, you know, I'm zoning out at the red light, and I hear this guy like, Hey lady! Hey lady! And I'm like, is that me? And I'm, oh, I'm thinking, no, I shouldn't look over. I'm, I'm really scared. I don't know. What if he's some belligerent, crazy person? And so I was like, no, but I shouldn't think that about him. And so I kind of looked over, you know, it's like, I'm kind of like in my mind, you know, thinking having through. Debate. Yeah, having this debate, you know, it's like, okay, he's a person too. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I look over at him and, and then he's like, hey, I'm, he's like, I'm really hungry. And then he starts doing this whole thing, like, oh, I'm so hungry. Like, oh, you know, and, you know, I'm having this battle inside me, like, okay, you know, like, do I some money help them and then but then I know uh, there's a other part of me where I also support organizations that help homeless mm -hmm. people you know get back on their feet and they know what they're doing I don't know what I'm doing if I'm giving him a dollar it's like right. and again right. it goes back to this my life getting that dollar is like my energy do I just want to hand it over mm -hmm. do I feel like this person not that they're not worthy but it's like do I feel like this person will take care of this part of me mm -hmm. and I didn't feel it and so I said to him I'm really sorry but not today. And then he's like, oh, you're so not compassionate person. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're like that and blah, blah, blah. And I was really sad, like torn inside. Um, and, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I felt like it's okay. Like, you know, he um, has to find his own way. He has to figure out his own life. And, you know, and it's not for me to try to change his life for him. So maybe by me saying no, it'll help him to think, okay, maybe I do need to go get help. Or something so mm -hmm. it's an ongoing battle mm -hmm. but that was like one instance where I'm in that moment and he's like telling me what a horrible human I am and I'm thinking like, I'm such a horrible human you know and it's like this whole mental thing happening you're like if you yeah. only knew what's going yeah, on yeah like, this exactly. moment exactly you feel me. really bad yeah me. yeah I mean it's, it's aren't you compassionate for me exactly <laughs> exactly yeah it was just, just like this whole thing was happening inside me so I feel like it's a daily a daily practice mm -hmm. But yeah, being seeing people for who they are, and trying to be I interact with people in your best way possible, mm. as much as you can. Mm. I love that. That's, and it can be really tough, yeah. especially if you like things that way. But yeah. it's such a nice perspective to at least go out in the world from that space. Yeah. Even your loved ones, because you take it for granted, you know. Oh they, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's the hardest place to do the work because you know them so well and because it's so easy to fall into the trap of, you know, they're my parents so they should act this way or they're this or, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, just the boxes that we subconsciously place people in or ourselves right. for that matter. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, that's really beautiful. 
It has been such a beautiful, <laughs> such a beautiful interview. Yeah. Thank you for your energy mm -hmm. and allowing us in your space and for opening your heart to us and to the community. Um, and giving us your energy in that time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's been so nice a different to perspective of it now. So <laughs> it means even more than it would have before this interview. So yeah. thank you for giving us that gift. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's been so nice to share it together. Yeah, um, I know I can speak for the both of us when we say that we're just excited to to meet you in this moment in time and to see where where this whole creative process leads you to what avenues and whether it be books and or where, whatever wherever it goes. So we're excited to be on the journey and to support you through that journey. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I hope that you enjoyed the time oh, oh my God. just as much. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, we gotta go. It's like, we gotta go. Yeah, it's just our conversation. <laughs> uh, that's right. Um, anyway, yeah, so we'll see you soon, and I hope you enjoyed just as much as we did. Yeah.